Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back once again with our sponsored series from Mocha, where we look at using Mocha technology to extend your home computer network using your cable television wiring. And as we've discussed in prior videos, the performance is, in my opinion, uh, pretty close to what you'll get with gigabit ethernet, but you don't have to go through the expense of rewiring your house with Cat5 or Cat6 wiring to get that performance. You can use the wires you already have for your cable TV, and it doesn't interfere with your television service. Now, in our last video, a lot of people were asking about power line adapters, so I uh, picked up a pair here, and we're going to see how these devices stack up to what we were seeing with Mocha, and basically replicating some of the tests that we did in the prior video, where we try to get uh, this room on the other side of my home connected up to the network in the fastest way possible. And we'll see how these power line adapters compare to Mocha doing that real world test. And then we'll plug these adapters in right next to each other down here just to see what the perfect world scenario uh, might bring for performance again uh, versus Mocha here. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Mocha. They've designed the technology that goes into boxes like this one from Action Tech. They also reviewed what you're about to see before it was uploaded for accuracy. However, all the testing that we did with all these devices was done by me in this house with no other assistance, and Mocha has agreed to accept whatever the results are. Let's talk briefly about price point and how they work, and then we'll get into our testing results. Uh, so the Mocha adapter I've got here is a 2.0 bonded adapter from Action Tech. Uh, this is a gigabit performance adapter. Uh, you get two of them for 150 bucks. Now, by comparison, the power line adapters cost less. So this pair from Comtrend uh, running with GHN costs about $70. I should also note there is a version of GHN that operates over cable TV wiring, much like Mocha does, but they don't recommend using it with existing cable or satellite TV services, uh, whereas this device will work alongside of it without any issue. So I think if you are looking to do GHN over coax, uh, make sure you don't have your uh, cable TV service running on the same wire. Uh, we also picked up this kit from TP-Link, uh, these cost $50 for the pair, and like the, uh, the, the Comtrend adapter here, these work over your power lines. And uh, the way you hook these things up is actually very similar. So, of course, with the Mocha adapter, you plug one end into your cable TV wiring, this Ethernet jack into your router, you take another one and put it somewhere else in the house, connect it up to your cable TV wiring. You can then hook up a cable box or a TV to this port here, connect up your game console or computer on this side, and you've got your network extended. Uh, these work over the electrical wiring, so you plug one into an outlet, connect it up to your router, and then take another one and pop it in someplace else in your home. Now, in this test, what we're going to do is uh, basically replicate what we've been doing with the Mocha adapters, hooking up one near the router here in the basement and then locating the other one all the way on the other side of the house. And I've already got a Mocha connection established here to the basement, so I figured we would do a quick bandwidth test here. So let's push the button now and start that test to that computer upstairs, and we'll be uh, seeing what kind of performance we get pushing data over our cable coax wires using Mocha. And you can see we're getting about 940 megabits per second on that test, which is very close to what I usually see on my gigabit ethernet here in the house. Uh, we're doing something here called an iPerf test, which just saturates that network connection to see what the potential performance is. And as you can see here, we had a very steady stream of data uh, going very reliably at a very high rate of speed using those cable TV wires and not interrupting any of the cable television broadcasts also being consumed here in the house. Now this test simulated a download, so now we're going to go in here and reverse the test and have it upload to the computer in the basement here, and we'll see how we do on this test. And uh, my cable TV wiring in the house is not great. I've got a lot of extra splits and whatnot upstairs, and uh, this is not ideal wiring, but we're still seeing uh, really good performance here on the upload, well over 800 megabits per second, and again, pretty close in line to what you might normally see with Ethernet, give or take. You might see a little bit better performance with a straight Ethernet connection here, closer to what we saw on the download test, but still very, very good here for a non-Ethernet solution. So let's move on now to our power line adapters, and we'll begin uh, with these Comtrend GHN adapters. 
uh, these were not as fast. In fact, the best performance that I got up to that bedroom uh, was 50, or just about 50 megabits per second, 49.49 megabits per second when transmitting data down here to up in that bedroom. Uh, likewise, when we reversed the process from the bedroom back down to the basement, we were seeing speeds at about 47 megabits per second. So significantly slower, but it was reliable at least. We weren't dropping packets. The ping rate was looking reasonable. Uh, so it was a reliable network connection, just not a very fast network connection, but we did get about the same speed in both directions. We did not, however, experience the same performance out of the TP-Link adapters when they were running that very similar configuration. So same outlets, same computers, same everything. The TP-Link only got 15.5 megabits per second when we were sending data from the basement to the computer in the bedroom, basically simulating a download. Uh, that is much slower than the gigabit speeds that they uh, printed there on the box. So certainly a big performance hit here versus the Comtrend and an even larger performance hit when compared to the Mocha adapter running that same test. Let's take a look and see exactly how these adapters can work in a perfect world scenario where they're plugged into the same circuit and we'll see what we can get for maximum bandwidth out of these things. I'm going to go retrieve that laptop from the bedroom. We're going to bring it right down here, plug it into my plug molding and see what happens when these adapters are plugged in right next to each other. All right, so I've got our two Comtrend devices plugged into my plug molding over there. I have one of these alternate circuit plug molds, so every other plug is on a different circuit. So I put them both on the same circuit here just to make sure we had the perfect real world test. And uh, this was the result that we got here, about 150 megabits per second in, uh, I think, probably the most perfect environment we can get for these adapters here. So uh, that is about the best we should expect from these, I think. I'd love to hear if you've seen different results from these GHN adapters, but at least in my testing scenario, that is what we ended up with. Let's take a look now and see how the TP-Link performs in the same configuration. So we just ran the TP-Link in the same configuration and did a little better than the Comtrend and certainly a lot better than the TP-Link did with our uh, testing scenario earlier. So these now were performing at about 187 megabits per second, which is much better uh, when they're on the same circuit here, essentially. And these are things we'll probably have to poke around on different outlets and see which ones perform better than others. There's a lot that can interfere with power line. Things that are plugged into your electrical sockets and other parts of the house might impact it and provide interference, perhaps. And uh, if you've got multiple, uh, you know, breaker boxes in different parts of the house, it's got to travel through all of that stuff in your electrical wiring to get back to uh, the other adapters it's communicating with and I found it just never is a consistent experience and it is never a fast experience never anywhere near uh, gigabit speed and we did find with the Mocha of course that uh, it works pretty close to Ethernet when you are connected through your coax TV wiring so there you have it a real-world comparison in my house at least as to how Mocha here compares to power line adapters and you can see just how much faster uh, your coax TV wiring can be versus a power line connection. Uh, in all three cases, the network connection was stable, but again, we're seeing a lot more speed uh, out of the Mocha adapter here than we were over our power lines. And I think the best you're going to get out of some of these power line adapters is maybe 200 megabits per second if all the right conditions line up, whereas even in pretty poor wiring conditions like I have in my house, uh, we were getting a pretty consistent 900 megabits per second plus out of the Mocha. And why the bandwidth matters is because we're now consuming a lot more content from Netflix in high definition and certainly now in 4K, and that will saturate connections. If you've only got 15 megabits per second coming down to this uh, TP-Link adapter here, that will impact the experience. Uh, whereas with Mocha, you've got a bigger pipe. You can have more people on a Wi-Fi extender using Mocha technology, for example, that can share the bandwidth without impacting anyone else. And again, I've just found it to be, in my experience, a better solution. And I've been a, a longtime user of Mocha long before they became a sponsor on this channel. I think it's a very good technology. So let me know what you think down in the comments below, and we can maybe explore some things further. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at configuring your Mocha network and setting one up from scratch. That one will be up in about a month or so. Until next Next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. 
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.